mind readers, clairvoyants. These kind of characters were a dime a dozen in Houdini and Doyle's day. Both men shared an interest in mind reading, but in very different ways. I'm about to meet a mind reader of my own. I'm Rebecca Lydiard. Oh my god! I play Constable Adelaide Stratton on the television series Houdini and Doyle. Join me as we explore Houdini and Doyle's world of wonders. Rebecca, I'm going to read your mind. Okay. First, I want to establish something. You and I have never met before. No. Not even off stage. Nope. Fantastic. What I need you to do is I want you to take your hand and just hold it out for me, please. And I'm going to examine your hand. When Arthur Conan Doyle created his literary detective Sherlock Holmes, he gave him the powers of deduction, which allowed him to glean seemingly minute, unknowable details about people just by observing them. That's much like a mentalist nowadays when they do a cold reading, where a mentalist apparently reveals information about somebody that he couldn't possibly know, plucking secrets apparently out of nowhere. Take the tarot cards out, please. Okay. I want you to give him a good shuffle. Just mix them up haphazardly. Doesn't have to be neat. Place them in the center of the table. Excellent. Now put your hands on the table like this. Okay. Look at me. I want you to close your eyes. And what I'd like you to do is just to breathe in and slowly breathe out. Open your eyes. Hand me your hand again. Try not to give too much away. So this first card you gave was a Queen of Cups. Do the initials RAF mean anything to you? RAF, RAF, a gift? Flowers? Yes. What does that mean? I received a gift recently of flowers. What does RAF mean? The person who sent them to me, that that's their name. That came out of your palm, all right? This goes with something that's maybe green. I see something green right there. Um, maybe holiday, um, St. Patrick's, being late for something. Mm. As a result of St. Patrick's Day Parade. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. That's what I thought, yes. I want you to think about the very first pet that you ever had. Okay. You didn't have this pet when you were first born, did you? No. It'd probably be when you were about 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere in there, maybe 10. Mm -hmm. It is 10, okay, good. It would probably be something like a hamster or a rabbit. Yeah. Was it a rabbit? Yeah. Yes, and you're wondering if I can tell you the name of that right now. It's like something like whiskey or whiskers. Oh, Mr. Nibbles. What? How did I do? That, that was pretty good. <laughs> like. That was so good, I'm feeling almost a little emotional about mm. that. That was like you, you read my mind. That was like you read my whole life or from my palm. Yeah, some mentalists want you to believe that they're truly psychic. And they're not. No, they're not. Much like Sherlock Holmes, a good mentalist has to be versed in many skills. Great observational skills, and also has a fantastic understanding of human nature. Back in Houdini's day, when he was going to a town, he would get an old person, take him to the graveside, the local graveyard, and that person would point out the graves of the people that were possibly coming to his show, and they would tell him all kinds of information about them. Houdini would reveal that on stage. Nowadays, it's a lot easier. We have social media. So, you Facebook creeped me? Yeah, unfortunately I did. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benichek. Uh, you're more than welcome.